Hello all, my name is Dr. P. Sedraman Shivakumar, Senior Scientist at the Central Tuber Crops Research Institute, Trivandrum. So now we are going to deal about a module on cone of experience. I believe that you have mastered the earlier module on audiovisual aids and now you have pretty good idea about these wonderful devices. Any learning device or tool which aims to impart quality education need a sound theory or model to help them to put it into effective use. Do you know any learning model or theory which proposed a path breaking concept and has revolutionized the process of learning? If I trust my ears, someone told, someone talked about the word called cone. Yes, you are right. It is the cone of experience model proposed by Edgar Dale, an eminent education of early 1900s. This module deals with the novel concept called cone of experience. At the end of this module, you will be able to at the end of this module, you will be able to describe the cone of experience and its origins, various types of learning experiences in audiovisual education, and the ways to utilize the audiovisual media to provide specific learning experiences. Let's begin to explore the concept of cone of experience. The cone of experience is a visual device that explains the interrelationships among different audiovisual media and also helps the teachers in selecting the suitable instructional methods for effective teaching. The cone was conceptualized by a legendary American educationist, Edgar Dale, in his textbook on audiovisual methods in teaching, published in the year 1946. The cone is based on the assumption that Learners use a variety of senses like sight, smell, hearing, touching and movement and a variety of experiences that utilize the maximum senses to produce a concrete learning. The cone of experience is probably the first systematic attempt to design the instructional system in a more realistic way to enhance the, its learning effectiveness. It's not surprising to note cone of experience is the most influential learning paradigm in the post-World War II era, which influenced the audio-visual audio education in a greater way. Let us explore the origins of the cone of experience to understand the evolution of this wonderful concept. The cone of experience is broadly based on the concrete, abstract nature of the audiovisual media. The concept of concrete to abstract continuum was introduced by John Adams during his 1910 in his book Exposition and Illustration in Teaching to explain how close the audiovisual experience is with the reality. For example, a documentary on suffering of a child laborers in India will make the audience more sensitive than using the pictures and charts. This continuum is loosely based on the Piaget's and Vyorsky's constructivist theory, which is a mental structure that determines the level of sensory engagement and the type of learning occurring when interacting with the audiovisual aids. This theory, this cone of experience theory, assumes that visual experiences are more powerful in increasing the learning efficiency than other sensory modes. This assumption was later proved by various research studies, which concluded that 83% of all human learning is achieved through the visual means. The cone of experience theory was founded from John Adams 1910 book The Order of Merit of Concreteness and the Walt which 1944 work on training manuals. However, a direct ancestor of the cone is the Charles Hoban's learning graph. Hoban proposed a learning graph to depict the relationship between media and the learner using a concrete to abstract rational where the visual media are arranged along the y-axis while the learner's level of development that is a concrete to abstract thinking is placed along the x-axis. Using the Hoban's graph, the teacher can effectively identify the learner's current level of concept development to select a suitable media from the y-axis. Let us see what is all about the cone of experience. The cone of experience is a pyramid-like visual structure where a series of 11 learning experiences are stacked upon each other to form a cone shape. 
The cone identifies the learning experiences according to their degree of experiential concreteness or abstractness. The most concrete experiences are very similar to the real objects, a real experience. They are arranged at the bottom of the cone, while the most abstract ones which demand high level of cognitive processing for interpretation are placed at the top. According to the Dale, the cone is a visual metaphor of the learning experience in which the various kinds of audiovisual materials appear in order of the increasing abstraction as one proceeds from the bottom concrete direct experiences. Edgar Dale has proposed only 10 categories at the first beginning like direct purposeful experiences, contrived experiences, dramatized experiences, demonstrations, field visits, exhibits, motion pictures, radio, recording, still pictures, visual symbols and verbal symbols in his original text. Later, he modified the dramatic participation to dramatized experiences and also included the television into the cone. Dale endorsed the Brunner's cognitive psychology based modes of learning like inactive learning which relates to the direct experience, iconic learning which relates to the pictorial experience as well as the symbolic learning which relates to the abstract experiences and included them in the kind of experience. First, the inactive experiences which involve direct hands-on experiences where the learner himself or herself is directly involved in the experiences and use his or her visual or tactile modes to synthesize the learning. The action-based information derived from the experiences is processed and stored in the memory. For example, a two-wheeler driver training involves actual experience of driving a motorbike where the learner stores the learning derived from the articulation of their motor skills learned while during the driving process. Number two, the iconic mode. In the iconic mode, the information stored in the brain in the form of an image. So using a photograph of very rare plant species can help the learner to examine them and match the image with their mental image and interpret that this is a rare plant species, the name of this species is like this. The third one is the symbolic representations, which involve storing the actions and the information in a more abstract form that needs high level of cognitive processing to derive the meaning. For example, language is a symbolic representation which requires proficiency on the part of the learners to understand the language and speak. Dale has indicated the cone was an outcome of his decades of teaching experience in various schools in United States. According to him, the cone is not intended to show the value judgments about the learning experience. He is not there to compare the learning experiences with each other. Each other. Like in the simple terms, he said it is a guide which helps to select the best and best learning experiences. He insisted that learning experience is worthy but when it is based on the learning situation. Having understood about the genesis of the cone, now let us begin to explore the various learning experiences listed in the cone. So these learning experiences are categorized into three categories like inactive experiences, iconic experiences and symbolic experiences. When it comes to the inactive experiences, which involve providing a direct and hands-on experience to the learners he, who use their motor skills to perform a task or examine a piece of representation of the reality through which they derive meaningful interpretation. The inactive experiences involve learning by doing through direct purposeful experiences, contrived experiences and dramatized experiences. So what is direct purposeful experiences? So it is a more concrete, direct and purposeful and direct experiences which are placed at the bottom of the cone. By employing all our senses, we interact with the reality and explore the real world to develop a wealth of rich and meaningful ideas on the aspects of the things around us. We develop concepts and learn from the first hand experiences by comparing the similar experiences of the past remembering our likes and dislikes, analyzing their strengths and weaknesses, and making interpretation out of them and store them as memories in our brain. For example, 
the bachelor of science in agriculture students are assigned to cultivate the crops for two semester during their undergraduate study to gain practical experiences these experiences will help them to store these memories in their brain and refine their skills in cultivating the crops the visible and tangible experiences derived from cultivating a real crop helps the students to understand the dynamics of agriculture in a real life from sowing to harvesting which enhances the retention of learning according to dale maximum learning is achieved mainly through direct and purposeful experiences the second major part is contrived experiences which are called edited realities which differ from the original reality in terms of their size and complexity but they offer the similar experiences than that of the reality these contrived experiences are used when a real thing or situation is difficult to handle or which is too dangerous to experience the models of seed store structure or paddy harvester or mock up or a working model of a meat processing factory and a plant and insect specimens are few contrived experiences we experience in our daily life the third type of experience or is dramatized experience the dramatized experiences involve participating in a reconstructed experience reconstructed real life experience like participating in plays pageants pantomime role playing either by acting a part of it or watching others to act acting in a dramatized experience is more concrete than observing others to act than it is placed below the observation in the cone the dramatized experiences like role plays puppet shows are proven to be effective in communicating technology related information and mobilizing the farmers at the grassroots level the second major category is iconic experiences which stimulate the visual perceptions of the learners who are creatively involved in the process of learning the learning acquired through this mode is stored as a visual images in the brain demonstrations field trips exhibits television and motion picture still pictures realistic drawings radio and recordings are few learning modes that provide iconic experience so let us see what is a demonstration demonstration is a act of showing something to help the learners to understand and easily and act upon with simplicity it is a primarily a visual explanation of an important fact or idea or process followed by the discussion of discussion or a kind of physical activity there are two major types of demonstration which are widely used in extension or in other adult education they are method demonstration and result demonstration the method demonstration is a short demonstration conducted before a small group to show how to perform a thing how to perform a newly entirely new practice or doing a old practice in a better way the result demonstration is showing the value or worthiness of the new practice to the intended users for example demonstrating how to use a paddy harvester before a small farm group of farmers is a classic example of method demonstration and conducting frontline demonstration with an improved aromatic rice variety where the farmer can see that how the variety is grown and what is the yield of the variety so that they will be convinced about the output of a particular demonstration that is called the result demonstration its result demonstration shows the worthiness of a particular technology while the method demonstration shows how to perform a particular operation or how to use the technology so the second part is the field trips field trips or excursion or study tours that will help us to observe the things in real life which cannot be experienced in the classrooms the field trips provide an opportunity to interact with the people and get involved in what they do these experiences will help us to learn visually with the limited participation or manipulation of the actual event for example a field trip to the tapioca growing areas in salem district of tamil nadu will help us to observe how tapioca is being cultivated harvested transported to the factories and processed into starch and sago while during the trip we can interact with the farmers traders industrialists and 
which will supplement our knowledge gathered through other observations. In case of exhibit which involve arranging models, specimens, charts, photographs and posters for a public view in a meaningful way which helps the learner to comprehend the visual images through observations and learn the concept in a holistic way. For example, the Kisan Mela that is a farmers fair are organized in various states of India to help the farmers to know about new varieties, improved cultivation methods and the new post harvest products which are developed from agricultural crops and also to gather the seed materials of the improved varieties for cultivation in their own field. So when come to the tele television and motion pictures which provide the learning experience by synchronizing sound with still and moving images. These television and motion pictures are very effective in providing presenting a physical movement with continuity of ideas and events. So they can using the television we can connect between the events so that we can understand a concept in a synchronized way. Television is a versatile broadcast medium which can live telecast an event, provide current news about the events, deliver the wholesome entertainment, broadcast and uh, stimulate discussions and also help in learning how to do kind of skills. Recently, the Doordarshan has launched DD Kisan, an exclusive channel dedicated to the Indian farmers. The motion pictures present a very abstract version of the real event by compressing them in space and time to provide a truncated experience of a reconstructed reality. The strength of the motion pictures are realistic representation, organized presentation and the clarity and accuracy of in which the messages are delivered. In the recent years, several documentary movies are being made on specific topics in agriculture and home science like mushroom cultivation, poultry farming, child development to help the farmers and people either to improve their existing farming condition or venture into new business or managing the family in a very nice manner. When come to the still pictures, realistic drawings, radio and recordings. They are the one dimensional aid as they engage only one sense in the process of learning. Those still pictures and drawings are popular extension aids to supplement lectures and also other verbal instruction. Radio is the most popular and widely used medium among the farmers. A high yielding variety ADT 27 released by the Tamil Nadu Agricultural University Coimbatore was popularized by radio during 1964-65 which has acquired a nickname called Radio Rice in the Tanjur district of Tamil Nadu. Even now, the FM channels are quite popular among the farmers. So when it comes to the third major part called symbolic experiences, which are more abstract learning events, which demand high level of learners' cognitive abilities to interact with the words and the visuals to derive the meaningful learning that are stored as symbols in our brain. These Symbolic experiences are primarily a language based experiences where the learning outcome depends upon the learner's mastery of the language and associated skills. Visual and verbal symbols are classified as symbolic experiences. The visual symbols are the representation of the reality in a more abstract form. Chalkboard communications, flat maps, diagrams, posters, charts, flashcards and flannel graphs are few examples of the visual aids. These visual symbols are easy to make at a very cheaper cost. Interpreting them is as difficult as it needs a very high level of cognitive processing and prior experience in using these visual symbols. When it comes to the verbal symbols which are primarily spoken or written words that have no physical resemblance or contain any visual clue about the original objects or ideas which they represent. The verbal symbols may be a word, an idea, a scientific principle which has no resemblance with the object or phenomenon. For example, the word environment is a general word which is used in different contexts with a different purpose. In the word entertainment also can be used in a various contexts. When these words are used in different contexts, context, they define different purpose. When it, environment is used 
in the context of a climate, it relates to the totality of natural forces like air, water, soil, living plants and animals which create a specific environment in a region. When an environment word is used in organizational context, it refers to the organizational environment. They are the set of forces in an organization which determine the functioning of the organization. So let us come to another important part like how to apply the Quanaf experience, the applications of Quanaf experience. In simple terms, Quan is a very simple and useful tool used for the media selection. Though Quanaf experience was developed through Dale's teaching experiences, it has incorporated several learning theories and models. It is used in a variety of ways to build theories, explain the communication process, and also to design the instruction. It is specifically used for instructional system development, concept learning, as well as the child learning. So let us see how cone of experience can be designated as a theoretical model. Though cone of experience was developed as a visual device to select suitable learning experiences, it is also called as a theoretical model, which connects the instructional system design approach with the communication technology. The cone of experience has both the elements of a theory and a model. As a theory, it has a set of principles devised to arrange the learning experience in certain order based on their experiential concreteness or abstractness. It is a model because it is arranging the learning experiences in a cone form based on their inherent properties that are defined by certain rule like a concreteness to abstractness continuum. So it has the elements of both the theory and the model so it can be easily called as a theoretical model. The cone is a classic example of a theory based approach providing guidelines for improving the practice. Using the cone, the field experience extension person can choose the right audiovisual aids or for their target audience. An academician can derive theoretical insights from the icon of experience through classroom discussions and a researcher can test the concreteness to abstractness continuum to validate the cone of experience concept. So let us come to the other way of seeing the cone of experience as a communication model. As a communication model, the cone of experience classify the instructional media in a specific order and places them at different levels based on their concreteness or abstractness as well as based on the number of senses involved during the learning experience. The cone also help the source, the extension person or teacher to choose the right medium based on the learning task, whether it is a skill learning or it is a concept learning uh, and with the along with the learner characteristics, whether he is a low literate farmer or a child. So it matches the learning task with the learner characteristics. The, the cone of experience help the extension worker to choose a right medium which reduces the noise and to communicate the information effectively besides imparting the specific skills. An illiterate rice farmer may gain adequate understanding and the skill while participating in a hands-on experience training on any aspect including apiary, rice cultivation or SRI mode of cultivation than attending a verbal lecture. So let us see that how the cone of experience is conceived as an instructional system design theory. The instructional system theory design theory explains how an instructional process can be designed to enhance the quality of learning by matching the media with the learner attributes. The cone classifies the instructional media based on the level of realistic experiences they offer in the learning process at different levels. By combining the Bruner's modes of learning with the media and method, Dale has developed the cone into an instructional system design approach that helps the teacher to select the suitable learning experience for a specific teaching task and a learner characteristic. Cone is probably the first visual device developed for using the, using the instructional system design approach for the school education. So let us see how the cone can be used for the concept learning. As we know that Dale has explained that concept learning following a deductive approach through cone of experience. A gradual upward movement from the multisensory direct purposeful experience as the bottom to a more abstract verbal symbols at the peak of the cone 
helps the learner to develop concepts with various degrees of realism from concrete to abstractness. At the same time, the role of the learner also shifts from a very active participant at the bottom of the cone to the passive spectator at the top of the cone. For example, con complex concepts like food security and nutritional security can be taught using the direct purposeful or contrived experiences like role plays. During this event, the learner can experience a struggling life of a poor man for food and understand his quest for obtaining a quality food. So it, he can make his experience and internalize the feelings of a poor farmer. So let us see how the cone of experience helps in explaining the child development. The cone of experiences propose a progressive approach for child learning. The infants learn by interacting with the parents and observing their actions in real life through sensory experiences which are placed at the bottom of the pyramid. In this stage, using the pictorial books and educational toys can help the infants to learn effectively. As the children grow, their cognitive processing level increases, they begin to understand more abstract experiences. For example, the textbooks of children from primary school are illustrated heavily to help the children to grasp the information. However, in the youth and middle-aged people can understand more abstract ideas, objects and events. So their textbooks are a more of a theoretical or textual in nature with less of the visuals and more of a verbal symbols. So the cone of experience is a wonderful device. It is a magical device but it is not devoid of any criticisms. The number one criticism put on the cone of experience is they say it is a primarily a simple classification diagrams which, which shows the categories of different types of instructional methods or materials according to their relative degree of concreteness. So Dale also admitted this uh, lacunae and he insisted that cone of experience is only a model, a visual aid which helps to explain the interrelationship among the audiovisual materials as well as the indi their individual position in the learning process. He said it is an outcome of his several decades of teaching experience and it is not based on any empirical research. The second criticism thrown on the cone of experience is that the cone lays too much emphasis on the learning experiences and their contribution to the learning process. However, in reality, the learning effectiveness depends upon several factors like a teacher competency, teaching resources, learners individual differences and the learning environment and their role in the learning process is not explained by the cone of experience. The third criticism of the cone of experience is that the cone does not provide any guidelines on when, where, under what circumstances a teacher should or should not use a particular learning activity as an instructional strategy. Since the learning is an uncertain event influenced by several factors, the absence of guidelines on using the cone will reduce its effectiveness. The fourth limitation of the cone of experience is it is often displayed with the percentages of retention of each media. The cone indicates that the learners remember 10 percentage of what they hear, 20 percentage of what they read and the retention will increase in the multiples of 10. However, Dale's original cone had no information on the retention percentages which were later added by other researchers. Again, another lacuna is quantifying the degree of learning in numerical terms is illogical as the human behavior cannot be classified into percentages into the multiples of 5 or 10. So despite all criticisms, the cone still has its value. So in this module, we learned about the wonderful decision model called one of experience developed by an eminent academician called Edgar Dale. So we learned about the origins of the cone, its classification mechanisms and we also learned about the versatility of the cone, how it can be used as a theoretical or communication model, how it could be used for concept learning and how it was used to, to explain the child development. I believe that this module has enriched your knowledge on learning experiences and uh, gave you few tips for selecting media by matching the media types with the learner characteristics. Let us begin to appreciate and use the cone of experience in developing a creative 
interesting and relevant audio experiences for the future. Thank you.